Hey everybody at home at Old Guy Hi-Fi channel. Hope everyone's doing well today. Look what I've got. These are triangle speakers from their Magellan series, the Duetta 40th stand mount speakers. They are remarkable. Sit back, relax, and we're gonna talk about these amazing speakers. Past and present in the glow of autumn light. He holds the future gently like he held the past so tight in the old guy's high fi Everything feels right. Well, before we get started, big shout out to Mike Holm and his team at Home Audio. Um, our high-end audio reseller here in the western suburbs of Chicago. They're located in Woodridge. They have an amazing store. They have amazing product offering. They're very professional. They know what they're doing. There'll be a link to their website in the pinned comment in the video description. Um, I have no affiliation with them other than Mike has been super generous in loaning me gear for review. And these are one of the things he's loaned me. And what are they? Well, it's a triangle speaker from France. It is part of their Magellan series, which of course is their top line product. This is the Duetto 40th uh, for 40th anniversary. It is a six and a half inch two-way stand mount speaker. It uses a one inch horn loaded magnesium dome tweeter. And I'll put uh, pictures of the individual drivers from the manufacturer's site up here. It uses a six and a half inch uh, pulp paper coned woofer with a beautiful rubber surround. It is a ported cabinet, very rigid cabinet. Um, it is, as I said, a two-way. It is crossed over at 3,100 hertz using a 24 dB per octave crossover and very, very high quality crossover components, caps, air core inductors, and resistors, very, very high quality. It is uh, 80, and it's a 24 dB per octave slope, which really is interesting um, because it, it does the handoff between the, the seamless handoff between the midwoofer and the tweeter itself. It is rated at 80, 88 dB sensitivity. The frequency response is reported to be 40 hertz to 30,000 hertz, and I believe it is. And oh, by the way, it's all internally wired with AudioQuest cabling. Um, it is an 8 ohm nominal impedance, but it will drop to 3.4 ohms. So you need to be a bit careful about the amplification you use. So what did I use? Well, I wanted to put some price appropriate stuff on it. $7,000 speaker, I used the $6,000 Cambridge Audio uh, Edge A integrated amplifiers. They're class XA, big, beefy boy integrated. Wonderful sound. I also used the Galleon TS120SE, and the SE is a special edition with the upgraded capacitors in it. And I also used it with upgraded PS Vein Horizon tubes. So great on that end. I had the right amplification. As far as signals, digital side, I fed everything from Artivana, which of course is bit perfect. I ran into the Live Harmony DAC, which the review will be coming soon at about $2,700. I ran into the Gishelli Daisy, which is about a $1,300, $1,400 DAC, depending on how you equip it. And I also ran it into my Bifrost just because I know the sound of that. And I also used the Bifrost as the D to A converter for my CD transport because I did listen to CDs on this. I also listened to vinyl. And I have to read this because I forgot the model number. I got a brand new AT OC9 XEN moving coil cartridge. And because neither amp has a built-in phono preamp, I used the Cambridge Alva Duo phono preamp for vinyl. And I spun a lot of vinyl, I played a lot of CDs, and I streamed a lot of music. I've had these for about 12 or 13 days, and I've been listening for six, five, six hours a day easy, um, and just getting to know them very, very well. And I thought that was very important, considering their price and the level of performance that they offer. And what do they do? This is next level stuff. This is really, and I hate to use the phrase, but this is truly high-end audio. So for recordings, and I played a million different things, and I listened to them, and I dug deep, and I went in the archives, and I went down the rabbit hole with a lot of different stuff. But the four kind of standout recordings are these. So first, I use this recording from Rachel Barton Pine. She's a wonderful violinist and violist. Um, she is a Chicago gal. Um, I remember seeing her perform when she was very young here in Chicago years ago. This is Vivaldi's The Complete Viola di Amore Concertos. Now, this is not a commonly recorded set of, of concertos. It's very complex, and she acquits herself beautifully. She plays it perfectly. It's wonderful. You can hear the body of her instruments. You can hear the bow on the strings. You can hear her fingers on the strings. You get a real sense of her virtuosity and her actual kind of being there playing. And then when the mass strings and everything else, the orchestration is all very wonderful. It's super detailed. Very, very well rendered on this. Remarkably well rendered. Now, to get some mid-range stuff, I played this recording from Katie Mel Melu, M-E-L-E. 
UA called Secret Symphony. And it's wonderful. Her She's kind of folksy, popsy, British sound to it. Um, I don't think there's a lot of processing going on. There's a lot of acoustic instruments. It's a well done studio recording. Her voice is really, really interesting. It's a bit higher pitched than maybe somebody like a Bonnie Raitt who can go deep but can also get up high. Her voice tends to be kind of more in that slightly above middle register for female voices, but it's so interesting and so cool and really fun to listen to. And these gave me a great sense of her vocal range and her acuity on uh, with her voice. And then, of course, it was a very well-recorded studio album, so all the instruments were very well done. Just beautiful. It was a lot of fun. Now, to get a really big, symphonic, large-scale uh, soundscape, I used this recording, Leonard Slatkin and the Detroit Symphony, it's Aaron Copeland, and of course, Aaron Copeland is probably one of our most famous 20th century American composers. A wonderful, he wrote so many wonderful things. A lot of people will remember Emerson, Lake, and Palmer did a version of Fanfare for the Common Man. That's an Aaron Copeland song. Anyway, it was a recording of Rodeo, um, El, Mexi El Salon Mexicano, and Danzón Cubano. They're all ballets. And Rodeo, as you would guess, is a ballet about the Wild West and cowboys and everything else. But there's a lot of energy and there's a lot of stuff going on. And it goes from quiet to loud and crescendos and everything else. And these just kept pace. They're so agile. It's amazing. And so when it got complex, you could pick out the individual instruments. When it got quiet, you could hear. And this is the fun thing is you could get a sense that there were, and I mentioned this in a review of another product because I was listening to it on these speakers. You had this sense that there were people there playing the instruments. When it was quiet, you could kind of sense that there were people, performers on stage. You know, if you blindfold and you walk into a, a small room, you know it's a small room. If you were blindfolded and walked into a gymnasium, you know it's a gymnasium. Even without hearing anything, you just get that sense of space. Well, this gave me that sense of space around the quiet passages of the orchestra. It was so rewarding and so emotionally involving. It was just really, really wonderful how it rendered that. <coughs> Excuse me. Now, for some gritty fun stuff, Delta Blues, I played this recording by Robert Luke, uh, Luke and the Locomotives. Now, this was originally released back in the day on the AudioQuest label, the cable company. They had their own recording label, and I have the original CD release. And I listened to it on CD, but you can listen to it on streaming. And in the notes, the liner notes of the CD, it does mention that they, every, all the cabling in the studio and everything was done through AudioQuest cables, you know, whatever the best they had at the time. So I thought that was, you know, it made the recording really, really good. His voice is gritty. It is it is low watt, high fuzz, distorted Fender tube guitar sound. It's marvelous. It's wonderful. And the drum kit is so well mic'd. It's just absolutely amazing. Great attack on everything. Just absolutely marvelous. So that's a great recording. Good Delta Blues. My favorite record, famous excuse me. My favorite recording on that song on that is called Goodbye Baby. And it's really remarkable. So Let's talk about soundstage real quick. So soundstage is wonderful. Before we get into that, let me talk about just kind of the, the presentation of the speaker. It is very full range. It, even though they say 40 hertz, it I feel like it digs deeper. There were times when I thought the subwoofer was on. Now, I don't review speakers with the subwoofer on, um, but I occasionally will listen to it for fun or whatever when I'm just playing around and turn it on. And there are a couple of occasions where I went, oh, did I leave it on? I went over and checked and it was off. These will go down deep. Certainly, the, the 40 hertz is legit, um, and I think maybe even a little more than that in room response. Um, and when you reach the tuning port of the frequencies and the and the driver, the roll off is very very smooth. It does a good job of giving you that sense of depth, even though it may not go all the way down there. But the bass was articulate and fast and agile. This speaker is agile, 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 all the way through the frequency range. It is nuanced and articulate. You could follow bass lines very, very easy. As you moved up into the uh, lower mid bass and mid bass and lower mid range area, the drums were absolutely so re well rendered. On Luke and the Locomotives, that drum kit was, first of all, very well mic'd, but everything was there. You could get the, you know, hear the stick against the snare the, the, or the tom, the skin, and then you could hear the body of the drum. Rim shots, all of that. Symbols were clean, just absolutely crisp and clean, like you were standing right next to it. On the orchestral stuff, when the, you know, in, in Rodeo and in the Aaron Copeland stuff, there are some timpani. The timpani is like a big bass drum, but it's only got one skin. If you've ever seen a rock band, usually they have a skin and the, the bass drum is open and they mic it inside. Well, with the timpani, you know, the mics are up high above it. So you don't, there's, it's not mic'd individually like you would on a rock or jazz track. 
But the timpani has this particular sound, and you can they can change the tune the tone of the timpani. There's a foot pedal that can stretch or slacken the skin on the timpani. But when you hit it, the mallet is padded. You get that initial kind of hit and the the bass coming the bass note coming out of the bottom of the timpani. And sometimes they'll work the pedal to kind of change the tone of the note. And you could pick that up super clearly with this. But the other thing too is like a speaker that moves in and out, <clears throat> excuse me, like a speaker that moves in and out, the timpani skin comes back to its original position. So it's moving up and there's actually a sense of a, of a sound there. So you get the boom and the skin going down and then coming back, there is kind of almost the sense of that skin returning to its original position. That's how detailed this is. Now, it's detailed, but not fatiguing. It's detailed, but not clinical or cold or lifeless. It is detailed with life and articulation and nuance and unbelievable um, speed and just amazing. You couldn't, you, I, I could not stress this. I mean, I didn't play it super loud, maybe peaks of 85, 88 dB. It just was so unstressed. It was just effortless in the way it reproduced all the frequencies. Mid-range vocals, everything was done cleanly and naturally. And again, Detailed, but not clinical. Detailed, but not fatiguing in any way, shape, or form. Just everything was there. It's not a warm speaker, it, it, but it's not a cold speaker. It's not lifeless. There's a ton of life. There's a ton of energy, but not bright, not fatiguing. As you get into the upper mid-range and into the treble, again, just super detailed, transients and decays, and everything was just wonderful. You know, you'd have a big transient, and then the decay would come, and maybe there were other instruments coming in, after the tra after the big crescendo, and you could hear those other instruments. <clears throat> Excuse me, I get in a bit of I'm having a bit of a cold. Anyway, you could hear all of that. The decay was beautiful, natural, nuanced, and just I, the the best thing I could say about this is agility. This speaker is agile and detailed, but it's not lifeless. It's not strident. It's not fatiguing. It's just everything was rendered beautifully, and the imaging. Oh my goodness, let's talk about that. Center image was absolutely laser focused. Each instrument was precisely placed in space, right, on the orchestra. I could tell exactly where everybody was going from, you know, the first row with the violins over here and the violas over here going all the way back through the horn section, through the brass section, the woodwinds, all the way back to the big bass, uh, you know, the timpanis, bass drum, if there was bass drum in there, or the big double basses, string double basses. Um, just Everything was there, and the depth of the stage was outstanding. One of the best I may have, I, I think I've ever heard ever. The, the sound stage was, you know, I talked about when I did the monitor audio review um, that they, you know, sounded huge and they disappeared. Well, take whatever I said in that monitor audio review and multiply it by five. These things are just absolutely amazing. The sound stage is huge, but it's so well appointed and it's so well defined and way beyond the width of the speakers when needed. Very locked center, very good instrument place with great height. Vocals were rendered perfectly and depth of the sound stage was just outstanding. Just so wonderful and so rewarding. I really, really am fortunate to have had a chance to spend a good deal of time and a lot of time listening to a speaker this good. This is, and I hate to use the phrase, this is high end. This is next level stuff. Um, it certainly has been a very long time since I've had um, you know, a speaker like this that I've been able to listen to for an extended period of time. Um, this takes me back to the days when I used to have the crazy weird high end stuff. This is probably better. Um, better engineered, newer materials, all that kind of stuff. Just so well executed. Beautiful. And again, big thanks to Mike Holm and the guys at Home Audio. So hopefully you enjoyed the video as much as I enjoyed my time with these speakers and you'd be willing to give me a like and a subscribe. And if you wish to support the channel, there is a thank you button at the bottom of the window. And if you would like to join the channel, there will be a link in the pinned description and the video description, as well as a link to Home Audio's website. Under that will be affiliate links of all the gear I have in the studio. My playlists will be in there. Um, please continue to send me playlists. The Community Post has some great playlists. Please go check out the Community Post playlist. There's a lot of really good stuff on there. Um, please comment. Let me know what you think. Um, let me know your feelings about you know music that I suggest or the way I review things or the products I'm reviewing. Um, but let's please keep it polite and kind and no political stuff, please. Um, and that's that. Um, that's all I'm going to say about that. So please comment. Let me know. 
you guys know I answer comments. I read all the comments. I go through them. I appreciate that stuff. I want your feedback. I definitely want your feedback because I want to make the channel entertaining for everybody. And obviously, um, you know, maybe we can grow it to a good level. We're already pretty well along, and I'm very surprised by that. So anyway, thank you guys for that. I think that's everything. Like, comment, subscribe. Oh, if you want, you can follow me on Instagram. That's it. My name is Ed Holmut. This is the Old Guy Hi-Fi channel saying it's now your turn. It's your time to go sit back and listen to some really beautiful music, maybe on a wonderful pair of speakers or a great hi-fi system, and relax and enjoy your day. Thank you guys so much for the time you give me. I'm grateful for it. Thanks very much.